welcome back family friends and fans it is karma lately thank you guys so much for joining me i'm gonna talk to you guys today about my journey with prosnia where i'm at so far and where i think i'm going anybody that's just tuning in for the first time to see this prosnia um, update i've done this is my fourth update it would have been fifth but i didn't get to do an update last month um, please check out my prosnia playlist Really quickly, Perosmia sucks. It is a smell and um, it is basically a smell disorder where the neurons that are resting here send the wrong signal to the brain because they are damaged. After getting COVID in December, last December, I got Perosmia in March and those olfactory neurons are damaged and they're sending the wrong signal to the brain and now the brain is telling me that certain smells are like weird and it's not letting me smell things and taste things for what they really are so your reality is not my reality many of us in our facebook support group have been noticing a pattern a lot of us got covid then we got anosmia which is where you lose your sense of smell and taste altogether. Then after that, we got phantosmia, which is when you are smelling phantom smells that actually don't exist. And then we got porosmia, which is when you are smelling things that are distorted. And not distorted in a good way because distortion, even though it sounds like a negative thing, distortion can still happen and be good. For example, if somebody tells you, oh, you know, these roses don't smell like roses, they smell like milk chocolate. I'm not gonna be so, <laughs> I'm not gonna be mad at that. Um, it'll be weird, it'll be a mind-blowing moment, but it's not gonna be something that, you know, um, whereas, you know, oh, these roses smell like rotten animal or rotten garbage, then that's a negative distortion, so. Typically, for the most part, most people are smelling things in a terrible way, and it's because the damage of those neurons is not really letting you smell anything in a good way. Those smells are smells that I've never smelled before. I don't want to smell ever again. And I think that's the main reason why many of us do not tolerate them well. It's because our body and brain has not learned to tolerate them since they're so foreign to us. There are so many people that believe that you can push through the smells and eat the foods and that is true for them, not true for all of us. And I don't want any of you out there feeling like you're not strong enough because you're not tasting and eating the things that don't suit you. For example, I the other day thought that I could have something and didn't realize that I couldn't have something. I ate it believing that I could have it because uh, I recently discovered that I could have pita bread. The pita bread that I was cooking, um, it was like, it, was, it wasn't even pita bread, it was flatbread. And it said flatbread and I put it on the pan and I put cheese on it. Well, first I put cheese on it. I put it in the microwave for a couple of seconds just so the cheese could melt a little bit. And then I put a little olive oil on the skillet and put the, the flatbread on the pan so that it can just toast just like two minutes just like so have a little bit of a crunch with prosmia most times things that are fried or baked or in high heat or overcooked burned we can't tolerate those foods so i tried my best to just put it in for a few minutes and the result was fabulous i felt like i was eating pizza and so i put a little spinach on it i put some salt pepper and cheese and i was in pizza heaven 
my daughters went and got me pita bread so i tasted the pita bread without cooking it and i was like oh my god i can eat pita bread too so i thought you know what pita bread flatbread i can have these you know so i went ahead and did the same process with this one only these were pita pockets and it was whole wheat and i put it on the pan assuming that i could eat it i just as soon as it came off the pan i let it cool cut up a piece put it in my mouth and started i was as soon as i like went down to swallow it i i went like this and the and i tasted the rancidness and for me rancid food has just been intolerable and that whole process of you know um i rushed myself to the bathroom brushed my tongue brushed the top of my tongue brushed my teeth kept on rinsing with water rinsing with water it just wouldn't go away and it took a long while for it to go away and so i was definitely not going to finish the rest of the pizza but i had an alternative food i don't even know if i really ate dinner much that night i think i went to bed a little hungry but i had a couple of chips and i went and headed over to, to bed i woke up that night with um i woke up because i threw up so I was asleep and the throwing up process kind of like choked me up in my sleep and I threw up. I went to bed, wasn't thinking about it, wasn't telling myself, oh, that's disgusting, you know. I mean, it was hours since I had eaten the piece of um, flatbread, I'm sorry, p uh, pita pocket that I had, you know, put on the, on the, on the stove. And my body still rejected it so what that goes to show me and it's what my doctor said you know everyone has different levels of parosmia you can't base your experience on other people's and for those people who are very judgy and they're like well it worked for me so that's what you should do you should just push through it no it's working for you because you probably don't have the parosmia effect as strongly as some of us do you know, I say this in every update and I remind people of the severity of this. There are people on feeding tubes with parosmia. There are people who can only tolerate water and it is affecting their health. It's not that we're choosing not to eat because we want attention or we're choosing not to eat because we're not strong enough. No, you are strong. If you feel that you cannot eat it, there's a big possibility that eating it can harm you and do more harm than any good. So if you find yourself like some of those people saying, well, you know, I can only have water or I can only have this, you need to immediately and urgently go to a doctor. They may have to keep you for a little bit and feed you um, through a tube so that you can get sustenance until you can tolerate other foods. This will go away. It's just that for some of us, it's extremely severe and people are not understanding that. So I'm done with that. I don't want to talk about that, but I just get very upset with it. And also for anybody who is going to be uh, commenting on these parosmia videos, if you have an urge to comment about some herbal doctor and the herbal medicines that you saying are the cure for parosmia, I will be reporting you as spam. And I'm going to explain to you what that means. I am not saying that I don't think that there's something out there that could cure parosmia. Um, but I am not going to be spammed with names of random doctors who are not studying parosmia, who you are claiming that have uh, come up with a cure and no one knows about it. I need a little bit more of evidence please if you believe that there's something out there that helped you that cured you please tell me because i am on a facebook support group with over forty thousand people i think now we maybe have sixty thousand people i'm not even sure and everyone has tried so many different things and some people say well something kind of worked something didn't really you know like oh but i'm back to square one or something i feel like it improved or whatever it is my firm belief that is time time is what's going to heal us and all of these remedies are not it 
But if you have something for anxiety, something for depression, stress, um, ideas about other things, sure. But please don't don't spam my uh, YouTube page. Don't spam these important videos that I'm actually sharing something serious that has proven to be life threatening for many reasons to many different people. Please do not um, come with fit for false claims and misinformation that's going to misguide some of the people on the channel. I'm definitely not trying to misguide you guys. I really want to be very clear on what I'm sharing and if anything that is actually working or actually not working for me, I just want to share it with you guys. Um, but claims that there's an there's a cure for everyone is a little uh, exaggerated right now. It's a little too premature to make those claims and for me to support those claims. I can eat the cracked pepper chips, the salt and cracked pepper chips from Deep River. It is um, that is the name of the uh, company that does the chips. It is called Deep River, and um, it's the cracked pepper and uh, salt chips. Delicious, and it only has three ingredients: sunflower oil, pepper, and ch and salt, um, sea salt. I think it is. But the thing is that when you <laughs> look at these chips they all have a million ingredients and you're like oh my god what do you need garlic and onions for in everything so it's just so frustrating finding chips that you can actually eat that are not super distorted and i finally found those and those are good i don't know if i mentioned this in a previous video or if i haven't updated you guys but the walker cookies the shortbread walker cookies absolutely delicious and i can tolerate those um so far i still cannot have garlic anything with containing these ingredients or having them by themselves garlic onions meat most grains a lot of different nuts especially peanuts chocolate coffee although i wasn't able to drink coffee i loved the smell of coffee and that is not the case um all the essential oils I'm pretty much smelling them for what they are so I felt like the olfactory smell training has helped me with being able to smell florals and essential oils themselves um, I just don't know if it has done anything uh, directly or indirectly for the other foods um, I am not sure I'm trying to pick up on that pattern and I'm just not sure uh, the only essential oil that I still have trouble with is peppermint. Uh, it's not as intense as before, but I'm still having trouble with peppermint. And I just, I hope, I'm praying that, I know that it's been a year since I had this and I've been um, really pushing through. I really, really just hope that this is the final year and I can actually start eating foods. I think one of the foods that I'm really dying to have is fish uh i'm really really just dying to have fish and i was actually right before i had gotten covid i was in the process of finding out if i had any allergies so i'm gonna go ahead and do that this year as well i want to find out if i still have because I, I think i have a shellfish allergy but i'm not confident about it and so i want to see if i do in fact have it and if i don't because my my favorite food for real for real would be lobster and crab it always used to be and when i started thinking that i had a shellfish allergy because my sister and my dad have one i stopped having it but i really just want confirmation because if i don't i am going to be eating crab lobster just like you name it i'll eat. i'm gonna be eating it king crab like that's gonna be me all day but i first have to do the test and make sure so those are some of the foods that I'm dying to eat. I'm really not dying to have chicken. I'm not dying to have foods with garlic. Maybe that's just the way that I see it right now. I also cannot remember what garlic smelled like. Chicken is like the worst. So I'm probably going to be more leaning towards pescatarian than anything else. And see if that can lead me to becoming vegan or just stay pescatarian. 
I know that I'm going to want to have steak and brisket. I know that I'm going to want to have some pernil if I'm able to have it. Like, I know that I'm going to want to just because I have been wanting like a red meat. But I don't think that I want that to be part of my lifestyle anymore. Hopefully a lot of good could come from porosmia, like not eating things that are toxic to my body, cleansing out. I just feel like it's so important to be able to take good from whatever happens to us and this is something that I would like to do. Um, continue drinking the smoothies for breakfast, uh, continue with the meditation and the yoga like I've been because I really wanted to dedicate myself to my health last year and I'm carrying it over into this year and I'd like to just carry it over to the rest of my life. It's something that I've always tried to do here and there, but I really just want to be consistent for the rest of my life now. And yeah, anybody going through this, I mean, let me know if you guys would like for me to do a Q&A, like a live video, and we could just like chop it up, talk about this, really, really like give each other tips and tricks, things that you guys are eating that my, maybe I haven't mentioned that could or could not work for me. And that's really it. <sighs> um, it's great to share this information with you guys. Hopefully it's helping you. I'm going to be coming out with some resources and materials for you guys to help you with porosmia. And hopefully those help. Yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, share the video, push the algorithm, get me to the top, get me to go viral. Don't forget me when you're watching other videos. Check my playlist because my playlist is awesome. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.